Right, just a very short bit of video. This is a uh, noise source board which I purchased for using on a spectrum analyzer. All right, so if you don't have a, a uh, tracking generator, the theory is you can use, have a noise source which is like a broadband noise and use that with say a filter or something like that and then you can try and identify the filter characteristics from that instead of using a tracking generator. Poor mass tracking generator, all right? Now, I was gonna play around with this um, SSA um, 3R32X on the weekend whilst I was away. I took, I've taken it with me, I've taken this board with me, I was going to use this as a noise source to generate with it and play around with features and stuff on the SSA. Plug the noise source in using this little plug pack here and um, didn't work. No power. I thought, hmm, that's odd. Why is there no power? Anyway, Interesting shimmer there. Interesting. Um, and so I was a bit disappointed because I mean I couldn't play around with the scope with the um, spectrum analyzer way I wanted to and, and that sort of thing. So I thought, well, now I'm going to have a look at this board. So I've got the power hooked up to it. Okay, switch is currently off. Now it's got an LED just here. Which is, looks like it's on the power supply, so the power supply tracks come out the side. And it's got the LED there, and then it's got a little resistor, and it goes through up to this diode, which is obviously reverse polarity protection, and all that. Okay, so I've got a few things to check. Obviously, the first thing is to check that there's power. Okay, so let's uh, let's do that. And my bloody camera's shaking around. I've got a washing machine going. It's shaking the the floors a little bit, so it's making it jiggle. Sorry about that. Um, so that's the first thing to check. So I've got my probes here, I've got my meter already hooked up. Now let's have a look. So switch is currently off. Let's turn it on. And I'll just confirm this power here. Yep. 12 volts as it requires. 12 volts. Alright. So I'll check by the LED. Nothing. Other side of the LED. Nothing, because that should be ground side, looks of it. Resistor, nothing. Other side resistor, nothing. No power here. Okay, we'll check this diode. No. Nothing. No power coming out of the switch. My power supply is not showing any load, so it isn't shorted. So let's um, look into this a bit more deeply. Got to be careful not to short this out. Let's pop this off for a second. So let's have a look on the back. On the back, there's basically nothing there, right? You got the uh, contacts for the jack and the switch terminals. So let's hook this up again and spin it around the other way so I can get the connector on there that's shorting things out. Okay, power's on there again. So Power will be oh, get the other probe on there, be helping. Just get the probe on there. Okay, power's there, that's fine. That's definitely nothing on those ones. Switch connections. Okay, center pin. Switch is currently on or off. Which is it? Which is it on or off? I've forgotten. Switch is currently on. So there should be power this side. Hmm. Nothing. Okay. Let's turn the switch off. Oh, the switch is in backwards. Is that right? Or was it off? Was it already off? It's not a very nice switch actually. I don't like it. There we go. Off. So the switch is off. Still got power here. Yep. Power to the center pin. Hmm. Nothing. The switch doesn't work. The switch is dead. <laughs> okay, go figure that one. Now, how often is it you come across a board and the switch itself doesn't work? I mean, why? Now, it's got a little end plate on there. Let's just prise it up and have a look. I expect I can get underneath it and prise it up. 
I'm not sure I can, but the switch is broken anyway, so what's, what is there to lose exactly? Let's have a look. What's under here? You expect to see the end of the switch contacts. So there's the slide, and there's the switch body. Um, yeah, I can see a contact in there. Ah, hold on a minute. I can see a contact, but the contact isn't moving. The contact looks like it's stuck. I think the contact isn't in the switch body and it's sitting at the bottom of the switch. Let's get the other end up. Let's have a look at the other end. Obviously the switch is not very good quality. You shouldn't expect to see this kind of thing happening. Okay. Let's see what the other end of the switch looks like. No, I can't. No, the switch isn't sitting there, but it certainly doesn't seem to be working right. I can see a contact in there that is moving with the switch body. This end is anyway. Interesting. Let's have another look at this, shall we? And see if it comes on this time. I'll be messing with it. Hopefully that was actually in shot. I, couldn't, I don't know if it was in shot, I should have been checking that. If it wasn't in shot, sorry. <laughs> uh. It's not like I've done, you know, only half a dozen videos or something, is it? So. Aha, that flickered for a second then. Oh, there we go. It's a dodgy switch, definitely. Right, so that's now halfway across and that's on. <laughs> well, so. Let's get my scope fired up and just check the output and see what's coming out of this thing. Before I hook it up to the dispatcher analyzer. My dispatcher analyzer's got DC blocking and things like that on anyway. I also haven't got my DC block out after get DC blocked it put onto it. I haven't got that out mount now. I did have one with me when I was meant to go and try it, but uh, I never got that far. <laughs> yep, well it's definitely noise there. Lots of noise. Yeah. Yep, yeah, heaps of noise. That's definitely very noisy. So that looks fine. Um, if I do DC coupling on that, just to check for any DC offset. No, that's fine. No DC offset. No issues there. Okay. So I can now hook this up to the spectrum analyzer. I just need to get the cable for that. I should be right back. Okay, I've got it hooked up to the spectrum analyzer and it is working. It's putting out a minus 20 dBm signal um, which drops, start, well, starts dropping at around one and a half megabytes, uh, one and a half gigabytes, sorry. And then it drops again, probably about 16. 100 megahertz and then drops a bit more it's probably down at minus 40 dBm at 3.2 gigahertz so it's producing noise all the way up so it does actually work so I'll do a bit more video on this shortly and showing that I just need to change the camera okay so there you go there's the uh, spectrum analyzer plot based on this noise generator so that's what it's actually outputting so yes, broadband noise certainly. So if I um, disconnect this again, here we go. 
So that's without that. That's just the cable on there. Okay. So um, it's definitely doing a job. That's not connected yet. And there we go. That's connected. So um, yeah. So yeah, it's that sort of thing you can actually use to, instead of using a tracking generator. Um, I'm not sure about the quality though. Obviously, it is just noise. It's, it's only. It's not for good enough for precision values because obviously a tracking generator gives you a nice straight line. It's just bang on, exactly right. Um, let's reduce the span. Let's go down to um, let's do one gigahertz span. Okay, let's go a bit lower. Let's do one megahertz span. Right, there you go. Now you're starting to see some jittering around there. Let's reduce this bandwidth here slightly maybe too much let's reduce the span some more let's go down to 100 kilohertz mm -hmm. 10 kilohertz right and this is at a center frequency of 1.6 gigahertz right now so let's go down to say 30 megahertz where it's more optimal All right and there you go that's what it's getting so yeah it works um, I don't know is it is it um, let's go back to 300 Hertz bring it down a bit so let's try and see some more detail here so that's 10 Hertz resolution there yeah? okay let's go a bit uh, let's choose to span some more let's go down a bit lower So actually, let's do tinker. Let's just do that. Oh. I'm still learning how to use this thing. I haven't used it a lot yet. So it's still got 10 hertz resolution here. Um, 10 kilohertz bandwidth at 30 megahertz. Okay, as you can see here, 30 megahertz. 10 hertz resolution. Span 10 kilohertz. Okay. And it's got a sweep time of one second. So you can see the noise, I mean it's there, you can see a level, but it's not the best. Um, amplitude, have I got any this reference level there, it's fine. Um, yeah, so it it does the job, doesn't it? Um attenuate is on twenty dB. So beep it does if you go above a certain level. So I'll leave it on 20, it's alright. So yeah, it does the job. Um, but it's not as good as a proper uh, tracking generator. I mean if you've got a precision filter you're trying to tune then this kind of noise may not be good enough, right? If you're trying to do it like an RF filter where you've just got a big roll off, it's probably fine for that. Um, so anyway, I thought I'd just show that and um, Obviously, I need to fix this bloody switch. <laughs> Garbage. Garbage. <laughs> okay, have a good one. Catch you later.